Civil War Guru Show. My name is Steve Munson. I'm the Civil War Guru. And today we are in our world headquarters here in historic Bardstown, Kentucky. I'm here with my old sidekick, Kenny Rogers, our cameraman. And we're getting ready to shoot you a new video. And I am ex as excited as hell. We've got a great artifact to present to you. And I want to just tell you how wonderful this thing is. I'm going to go over it a little bit with you, and then we'll shoot the artifact. And what this is, this is a 1850 foot officer sword. And it has a wonderful presentation on the guard. And it, it was used, and here's the kicker, April 1st, 1865, at the Battle of Ebenezer Church, Alabama. And that was during the Wilson Raid, when General Wilson took all his troops and went, went through Georgia and then went through Alabama. And their goal was, Ebenezer Church is uh, about 30 miles from Selma, and their goal was to capture Selma and burn it down. And so Wilson had roughly 9,000, he started with 36,000, he had 9,000 hardened fighters for the Union side. And on the Confederate side you had Nathaniel, General Nathaniel Bedford Forrest, and he had about 1,500 men. And half of those were old men, they were, they were town troops, militia, so he only had about 500 fighting men with him. Well, what had happened is the, the Union side, the 17th Indiana Cavalry, in infantry under Colonel Wilder and they ran in head first with General Forrest, his men, and his escort. So the gentleman in charge of that was Captain James D. Taylor of the 17th Indiana. Well he sees the group of Confederate officers and this was his chance to charge them and to try to capture them. Well, when he initi initiated his charge, guess what? He was charging General Nathaniel, Nathaniel Bedford Forrest. And what is Forrest historically known for? Turning around and charging right at you. And that's exactly what he did. So they engaged. And this, this gentleman, this uh, Captain Taylor, was 21 years old. He enlisted as a private. And about two and a half weeks prior to April 1st, 1865, he was promoted to captain and was presented this particular sword that we're getting ready to show you. And the presentation's on the side. So he owned this sword for about two and a half weeks. Well, he charges. He's an old farm boy from Indiana near Indianapolis. With his group and General Forrest with his escort, they charge. And they ended up in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And Captain Taylor engaged General Forrest. Well, uh, from all the, the medical re afterward responses, this guy gave Forrest a fight for his life. He cut him in the head. He cut him on his arm. He broke one arm. He cut him several times. And he was beating. He knocked his hand, or knocked his sword out of his hand. It fell to the ground. And he almost had Forrest. And Forrest got his, uh, and also knocked his, his, primary coat navy out of his hands. So he was reaching for a secondary revolver in his holster and was holding his arm up trying to fend off Captain uh, Taylor. And he got his pistol out and killed Captain Taylor. And he killed several of the officers and men that were with Captain Taylor and Captain Taylor's men retreated. Well, Forrest was beat up. It was like he was, it was fighting a junkyard dog. And uh, so they, they cleaned up their, their folks from the, from the skirmish there. And he picked up, Forrest picked up his sword, and they picked up this particular sword. And then they left. Well, remember, the war was only about another two or three weeks long. So Forrest went back to his chief surgeon. One of his chief surgeon was Dr. Lucian 
McDowell, and he is from uh, Pre uh, Flemingsburg, Kentucky. He's a Kentucky boy, and he had been with him since Vicksburg. Well, he doctored uh, Forrest up, and, and he said Forrest looked like he was in a dog fight, and, uh, and he broke his arm. And actually, when he did his surrender speech, he still had his arm in a sling from this engagement. And this uh, unfortunate Captain Taylor, he was the last of the men that Forrest killed in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the only identified officer that was killed in combat. Most of them they engaged, they, they fought, and then they left. Well, because this was such a horrendous fight, and, and he damn near got forward, what he was trying to do is put force on the ground. And if he figured he got him on the ground, he had him. So anyway, he didn't make it. So Forrest, Forrest or Forrest man picked up his sword and picked up Captain Taylor's sword and he left. And then they hit it straight to Selma and if you're a historian, you know what happened. So it's a delight to have an identified sword used in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Confederate General Nathaniel Bedford Forrest and his ID, and it is unbelievable. I mean, this is the only ID artifact of one of the 33 men that Forrest killed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's also mentioned in a book called Yankee Blitz, Blitzkrieg. And uh, it, it talks about this engagement with Forrest and how, how Forrest and Taylor, uh, and Taylor almost had him. And then Doc, Dr. Lucian Young, he did the, the reports, the uh, standard reports that you had to fill out when you get wounded. And he talks about uh, this the bravery of Captain Young, uh, Taylor. And so it's a, it's a, unbelievable sword and like I say we got our famous cameraman Kenny Rogers and he's going to get up here and, and we're going to get the, the sword where you can get a good look at it see the presentation on it and we'll go from there so from the Civil War guru enjoy this video and also if you have any artifacts that you want appraised free we do that and we also do of course classic cars muscle cars etc airplanes being an uh, uh, aviator, I gotta throw the airplane thing in there. All right, so Kenny, reposition your camera and let's go from there. All right, Kenny's got his thing positioned really good here, and uh, you can see the handle of uh, Captain Taylor's sword. Now, I just want to bring his pointer in. This has got all the original go wash on it, and I guess overall. The guard has about 60% of the go wash. And that's the pommel cap and the guard. And and you're looking at the handle. The handle, the base right there, underneath the, the wire wrap, is gutta percha. So we know this is a European sword. This is a gutta percha. It's like a brownish black gutta percha. That's a hard plastic of the times and then it's go wire wrapped. Now there is a European stamp right up here under the guard and I'm 99 or 90 percent, let me say 90 percent sure it's French sword. But it's a, this magnificent, now later Kenny's going to turn it up here and we'll get the presentation on the end. Now what I want Kenny to do is just take his time and go down the, the sword and you can see where the edge of that sword is is boogered up. And that's where he engaged General Force. And then he'll finish off at the end where you can see the European style end, the point of the sword.
All right, Kenny got this thing repositioned, and we got a good shot at it, is what he's telling me. And that's the presentation on the side of the sword. That's why uh, Forrest, or how Forrest knew who he had killed, because the sword is identified. And we're going to move it around. It's also got his initials on the pommel cap, and I want Kenny to take a picture of that. Turn it off, Kenny. All right, he's got you focused in there on the pommel cap. Just a wonderful presentation. And like I say, if you look around on the guard, you can see there's 60% of the, the go wars still on the thing. And just a magnificent guard on this thing. But this is the actual sword that he used to fight Forrest. And I think we got it good. And we, and, uh, you know, we didn't really focus in on the scabbard because this is... This is the bread and butter of it right here. All right, Kenny. So from the old Civil War guru, Kenny Rogers, I bid you farewell. Thank you.